Hello, this is Bern, and today I'm going to reveal six reasons why good men leave the women they love so you can identify what's taking place in your relationship and prevent it from happening to you. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. The demise of a relationship is not 50-50. Sometimes it's 90-10, uh, sometimes it's 60-40, but I'm not gonna be talking about in this video when a guy leaves a woman he loves because he's a narcissist or because he has unhealed trauma or maybe because he's incredibly selfish and he's just learned that's from a child till now, his adulthood, to be a selfish human being who just looks out for himself. I'm going to be talking about situations where there's more nuance, where there's more of both human beings, you and him, making choices that make it easier for him to cut off eventually and to decide to end the relationship. And sometimes I've experienced women sharing with me, this happened so suddenly, I couldn't see it coming. And I wanna give you right now the language and the framework of what are some signs that you can witness right now including a relationship that you're in right now, or maybe evaluate one from your past, where you can notice if these things are taking place, then it's not too uncommon for a guy to one day say, I'm out. So the first sign a guy might leave a woman he loves is when there's lack of chemistry and sexual fulfillment. It's not in the particular order of this being the most important, I'm just sharing it first, because there's so many couples who start out strong, and through the practice of horrible communication and lack of expressiveness and lack of intimacy and maybe they have children and the children take the highest precedent in their lives and they just stop having that visceral connection that got them together in the first place or part of it and when that takes place for a long period of time it's not uncommon for both i'm not talking just the guy leaving the woman but for the woman to start feeling like there has to be something more than this so I want you to gauge right now the sexual fulfillment and the chemistry you have in a relationship, not as the end all be all, but as a barometer as to how other things are going and your capacity to express needs and to express desires and to express preferences and to have difficult conversations that sometimes are touchy and sensitive, but without having them, the potential for something ending is really, really high. Number two, is an imbalance between the playfulness and fun and the seriousness and the monotony and the responsibility in a relationship. Listen, a relationship that stands the test of time is going to have periods of more challenge, is going to have periods of responsibility and seriousness and heavy shit happening to both of you and to the relationship itself. But when you forget to play, you forget, you forget to date each other, you forget to have fun, you forget to just be funny with each other, you forget to be lighthearted, or it's just lighthearted and there's not enough seriousness, whatever imbalance might take place, if there's a strong imbalance between the these two opposing but incredibly needed forces, then that's one more way that the relationship can start being so different from what each one of you is looking for. Reason number three is something that I've labeled chronic deflation. Chronic deflation takes place when I'm gonna talk about you specifically since I'm talking to you, the feminine side of the equation. If you are more into nagging and if you're more into letting him know what he's doing wrong, regardless of the things he's doing right, if you're someone who practices passive aggressiveness, if you're someone who he gets a chance to feel after doing his best time and time again that he cannot fulfill your needs, your glass is always half empty, no matter what he does. And I know it seems exaggerated, but it's not. I've had the privilege of helping human beings and helping women specifically who have done this. If you don't have the ability to express your needs in a healthy way and you start punching him below the belt constantly, making sure that he knows that he's not doing quite as good a job, even though he is sometimes, then that's one of the feelings, that feeling of I'm less than in her mind and no matter what I do, I cannot fulfill her wishes, and uh, she's unhappy, 
and she's letting me know in the way she looks at me, in the way she talks to me, in the way she does things, in the way she finds more time to do things with other people than with me. When that takes place, that's a clear sign that something big is about to take place. It doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna leave you, but it does mean that something needs to change. Now, before I go into steps four through six, I'm going to make an invitation to you right now. If you're a single woman watching this video, there's a high likelihood that you don't fully understand the root cause, the real reason why you're still single. You may be focusing on the wrong symptoms. And what I've done is I've taken many years of practice helping women find love and put it all together in a simple quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds. So all you have to do is if you want to find out the real root cause of why you're single, you go to the first page link under the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Enter a few simple questions, answer them, and then in the next 60 seconds, you'll have two things. You'll have the number one reason why you're still single, a report that's gonna clarify all that for you, and then next to that, you'll have the number one thing based on your specific challenge that you can start doing right now to course correct, to reverse this, and to attract the guy that you want. Reason number four is a lack of genuine appreciation and admiration. It's different from the last one. The last one is where you're passive aggressive, when you're punching below the belt, when you're nagging, but this one, you may not be nagging or complaining or punching below the belt, but there's not appreciation basically and admiration towards him. Men, our infinite insecurity that we are <laughs> sometimes, is going to need admiration from our partner. Now, this begs the question, are you married to someone or are you in a relationship with someone that's admirable? Now, if you're not, why are you in a relationship with that person? And if you are, if you're not demonstrating, if you're not expressing it, then that's one of the reasons why he will look at uh, other opportunities and other human beings, other women sometimes. I'm not saying this is justifiable or justified. I'm saying this is why sometimes it happens. When you don't validate him in a healthy way, when you look down on him, where you don't, you, you, you lost your, he's an awesome guy in my life and I appreciate him and I let him know that he's appreciated when that doesn't happen and uh, someone who's not as intelligent or even beautiful as you um, bats her lashes to him, he's gonna feel something he hasn't been feeling in a while. And it's unfortunate. All it takes is small, specific appreciation moments, simple things. Thank you for holding me this way. Thank you for taking out the trash. Thank you for making dinner for me today. Uh, thank you for the way you handled that situation the other day when uh, your parents were getting aggressive and you actually hold that, held that space for them but also uh, stood up for me. Little things go such a long way and when that doesn't take place, the emotional bank account on his end starts figuring out how can I get this thing that's a need of mine and sometimes it's not through you. Number five is what I call communication daggers. Communication daggers means when the couple establishes an unhealthy or toxic dynamic of communication on two fronts, whether you're not communicating your needs and you're having to act in ways that are painful because you haven't expressed what you need or you're expressing what you need in ways that punch him and that hurt him. You're expressing what you need in ways that are overwhelming. I'll give you an example. Maybe you, the, the way you share your needs instead of saying, I would love it if you did this, is you never do this. You're always late. <laughs> or instead of saying, hey, this today, I would love it if you, did, if you do this, then not only do you say that he's not going to do it, but you remind him of the last 10 times in a row that he didn't do it. So it's hard for him to focus on how do I fix my past I mean, it's, there's an overwhelm that takes place when communication daggers part in, and that's passive aggressiveness, that's uh, elevating the voice in a way that's unhealthy, that also means running away instead of standing still, that means not being able to set boundaries. So when communication is not healthy, there comes a point where one or both human beings in the relationship feel this will never be fulfilling, this will never be happy, connecting with this human being down the line in the future, as much as I love her, is emotional suicide. So. I'm checked out, I'm out. And number six is loss of hunger for intimacy. I heard a beautiful de definition the other day that talks about intimacy being the intersection between love and truth. When you no longer seek that in your partner, when you no longer seek to continue getting to know, when you feel in your mind, I know I'm like the palm of my hand and uh, it's a done deal. When you stop noticing that the person's still changing and there's still things that you haven't gotten a chance to know, when you lose the hunger for intimacy, for truth, to see him, to 
to understand him, to figure out his world, his vision, his dreams and his future and his past, the whole thing, when you take it for granted, there's a lack of feeling seen, there's a lack of feeling known, there's a lack of feeling understood, and that's when sometimes shit hits the fan. Now, I'm not saying that any one of these specific things will create the demise of a relationship, but you can actually gauge right now if you notice that what I'm sharing with you, there's a few of those that either have taken place in your relationships in the past or are taking place right now, you're in a challenging space and more likely than not, you need to raise your hand and get some level of help so that you don't have to go through the painful lesson of I lost the relationship uh, and now I learned my lesson so I'm gonna do it better in the future. There's a way to course correct, there's a way to do things better. Sometimes that path is getting help. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. And if it is, and you want to understand the number one reason you're still single, please go to the first link in the description. Uh, if you like this video, click like or thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. If you think this is helpful for a friend, share it with a friend. <laughs> the more people who watch this kind of stuff, the more YouTube will actually put it in their feeds. And last but not least, if you want my hand holding and help, because you know that videos are powerful, but they're not as powerful as connecting and getting specific insights that apply to you, then second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your world, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.